Hello and welcome back to yet another tutorial on this channel. It's so nice to see all your smiling faces again. Well, I hope they're smiling. If they're not, eh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys five tried and tested ways how you can up your reptile keeping game. Now you may be doing some of these already, so if you are, well then, it's just going to be four or three or two tried and tested ways for you to up your reptile game. But we're going to show you everything you need to know right now. Roll intro. Number one on the list is to breed your own live food. The benefits of doing that is you can make your live food quite easily a lot more healthier than your actual ones you buy out the shop. If you feed healthy live food to your reptile, your reptiles are then gonna be healthy. It can be a big profitable thing as well. I've just made 2,000 pounds through breeding dubia roaches, which are these ones just here. This one's been mealworms. Over the other side of the room is my superworms. If you wanna know more about breeding live food, I'll stick a card just up here, that's a playlist, and that'll take you through all the videos that I've done on breeding live food. So have a flick through it, you might find something you're interested in. If you wanna know more about how I made 2,000 pound breeding dubia roaches just in a few days, then click subscribe and that notification bell and click all on the notifications. That way you'll get notified every time I do upload a video and that video is coming out fairly soon. Number two on the list, number two on the list is these things, toilet roll inserts. I think that's what they're called. I don't know what you call them, they're just, the them things. Yeah. They can be great for so many different reasons. I use these all the time. And what I do, like my savannah monitor just here, I'll stab that into the substrate quite far and I'll stick some superworms inside it. And he loves going in and nibbling around and trying to get to them. And it's amazing, the tongue work that he does really does add mental enrichment and a physical enrichment for the savannah monitor. But there's loads of other reasons you can use these as well. You can stack them up, you can tape them all around together and stuff like that. You can cut little tiny holes in and flatten one end so it's like a little hide thing and just leave it in the enclosure for a day or two. Just like us, if we're stuck in the house with absolutely nothing to do, we go stir crazy. Well, that's the same for your animals. So if you can give your animals a new little toy to play with, something a little different, it might stress them out a little bit, but it's great mental enrichment because they get to play around with it. And let's face it, we don't grow up, so how do they grow up as well? We love playing with new toys, so do they. So let's talk on diet variation. Now this goes for both lizards and snakes, reptiles, amphibians, invertebrates, absolutely anything. We vary their diet. So take Hugo here, for instance. I will get my locusts or morio worms or anything like that and just chuck them in. Mainly the crickets and locusts will just get chucked in, but they'll hop around and everything and he will run around chasing them, hunting for them, grabbing them. It, gives them mental and physical enrichment. The mental enrichment is the excitement, the food, the going around, the rushing around. The physical is the muscle growth that he's gonna be getting. He's gonna be working away really hard. He's gonna get his blood pumping, his blood circulating around his system really well. It's a great enrichment, but not just doing that. You can do so much in dietary variation. You can actually vary the diets. One day you could give them locusts, the next day dubia roaches, the next day super worms, and so on and so on and so on. So you can do that so good. But for snakes, let's move on to snakes because everyone thinks, oh no, I've got this one rat that's just got to go in there and get fed and I'm going to dangle it from some tongs and he's going to strike and it's going to be exciting. No, no. You want to change it up a little bit. If you want to add mental and physical enrichment for your snakes, let's move up to Sunglow. For snakes, what you can do, instead of just dangling it over and stuff like that, you can do that because snakes are exciting and you want to have them as a pet and stuff like that. You can get your rodents. You can vary the size of the actual rodent or you go for chicks. Just every now and then, change it up a little bit. It's a bit different for royal pythons and bull pythons because they can be really finicky eaters. But this one is a boa constrictor, so that's why I'm using this one. But I don't drop, I don't tongue feed anymore because they can just get too vicious. He's a clumsy little git and he likes to grab my arm and stuff like that, as you can tell. Now, you can hide the prey around. So one week, I might stick a prey over in that back corner over there, just lay it down. Let him physically go around and hunt for it. He can smell it, he can sense it's there, and he goes around. And that is not only mental and physical enrichment, but it's also a little bit of exercise as well. It gets his blood pumping, gets him a little bit more excited. And then when he goes and finds it, it's something different. Bang, he'll have it. Let's face it, you don't want to sit there eating the exact same meal every single day, do you? Your snake doesn't either. 
Now, number four on the list is research. Everybody does research on how to care for their animal, their specific animal. But do you actually do research on where they come from? What they feed in them in the wild? Where do they sleep in the wild? Do they live in burrows? What grasses are there? What plants are there? What's the substrate like there? Uh, hold on a second. I need my phone for this one. I'm recording with my phone, so bear with me. There we go. So, everybody's got a smartphone these days. It's so easy to get on Google. But the things that people research are how to care for these animals. Well, why don't people research where exactly they come from? Take a Brachypalma homori tarantula, Mexican red knee tarantula. It says it in the name, Mexico. So why don't you search out exactly where they come from? I've looked at various places on where they come from, the most populated areas, and then I've researched those exact places. Had a look at the surroundings, Google images and stuff like that. Not just about the tarantula, but about the actual area, the temperatures of the area, the nighttime temperatures of the area, the whole year round, do they get thunderstorms? Do they, will they benefit from a spike in humidity every now and then just to replicate a thunderstorm? What lighting do they have? Where do they sleep? So that you can replicate their sleep pattern with the heat and lighting and stuff, just loads of random stuff. You don't need to do research on the specific species, but the actual country they come from and replicate everything as much as possible. That way you'll have a massively happy, massively enriched animal. Now number five, 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 five. Number five on the list is interaction. If your goal is to have a handleable pet, then interaction is important. You need to interact with your animal. Do it responsibly, so only have them out of their enclosure for so long. If they're at the peak of the day, they're at their right temperature, they're out and about, they're doing their normal stuff, don't take them out of the enclosure then because they'll, be, they'll have a massive drop in temperatures and lighting and stuff like that and that could harm them. Don't have them out for too long. Make sure you're responsible with leopard geckos, don't grab them by the tails. If you're a responsible pet owner, you know all this already so I'm not gonna go into detail with it, but if your goal is to have a handleable pet, then interact with your animal. It can give them mental and physical enrichment, which is also massively beneficial. Me personally, I don't an handle a lot of my animals because I like to sit back and have that slice of nature in my collection and see their natural behaviors come out that they would have in the wild. That's my idea of mental and physical enrichment. Other people like pets. So they get theirs out, they play, they handle, this stuff like that. It's whatever you want, that's the way I do it. Mental and physical enrichment is the goal at the end of the day. That was number five. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button if it's of any help to you guys. Peace out.